Hello again, my story, very normal people. Today we have a guest from US. His name is David, and he is going to tell us how we can take charge of our lives. But before we go on that, let's let let's hear him about who he is and what does he do. Welcome, Arthur. David. Thank you so much for having me on. It's a pleasure to speak with you and your audience. Uh, so I grew up in the military. <clears throat> My dad was in the Marines here in the United States. And what that meant for me growing up was we moved up and down the eastern seaboard of the United States every couple of years. Uh, but we also spent three years in Japan, which was really exciting. Uh, I was a little kid then, uh, way back in ancient history in the late 1970s and early 1980s. And um, being exposed to Eastern culture and philosophy like that was really profound. We went to the Philippines, we went to South Korea, and then came back to the United States for high school. And um, I just appreciated that so few of my classmates had had the experience that I had in being exposed to different cultures. Uh, I had really a lot of success with English, with creative writing in high school. I won poetry contests and I wrote a short story that received national recognition here in the States. I wanted to be a writer, but I didn't know exactly how to go about that. And growing up on military bases, you're sort of isolated from the rest of the world in a way. Um, so not knowing what else to do, I got a military scholarship. And uh, after graduating university, I joined the Marines. I was in uh, Somalia in Operation Restore Hope in 1982. And I served 15 years on active duty, again, traveling all around the world uh, and visiting different countries. And then decided to get out in 2006. Immediately when I got out, I fell in love with yoga. That wasn't part of my plan. Um, but uh, a year later, in 2007, I became a yoga instructor. And all this while I was working for a Fortune 500 company. And uh, I was really excited about getting out of the Marines just for the simple fact that I knew I wouldn't be moving around anymore. Um, and the idea of living in one place was really exciting to me. So that enabled me to start writing again. Uh, it took me 11 years, but uh, 11 years after I got out, I published my first book in 2017, and I've published two other books since then. I'm working on my fourth book right now. Congratulations. That's very good, and yeah, it's a pleasure to have you. So, uh, why do we need to take charge of our lives, first of all? Why do we need that? Let other people say something like, like soldiers, and we just... Follow that. It's easier. We uh, we live in a society a lot of times where it is easier. And honestly, our educational systems, our government systems, our corporate systems are all designed to follow someone else's lead. In school, it's the teacher or the principal. When you get out, whether you work for the military, whether you work for the government, whether you work in the civilian sector, you have a boss or manager who's telling you what to do. And... That's all well and good, but at some point you realize if you really want to fully live your life to the fullest that you possibly can, you have to take charge of your entire life. And that means you have to find something that you're passionate about, something you're willing to put everything into to create a life where you impact lives around the world and help other people. And when you make that kind of contribution, you realize that's the ultimate path towards freedom for yourself. Okay. Let's say that somebody wants to change his life or as you say so uh, how can you how, how how can we help him let's say using some steps or, or something how to start where can he start yeah the, the, so the idea that i've come up with is what if you lived your life like you were in a movie <laughs> and i'm not saying that life is a movie because it's a very different thing it's and i'll give you an example it's one thing to say life is an automobile, it's another thing to say, live like you're driving a Ferrari. Those are two very different ideas, right? So live like you're in a movie means take charge of your life. And part of what you have to do is figure out, okay, what has been the story of my life up to this point? What's, in other words, what kind of movie have I been filming? Is it a drama? Is it an adventure? Is it a tragedy? Is it a comedy? Hopefully you're not living in the land of reruns where you're doing the same thing day after day, week after week, month after month, and expecting your life to change because we know that's Einstein's definition of insanity. And you you can't really do the same thing and expect different results. So you kind of have to figure out, okay, what's been my story up to this point? Once you figure that out, you say, okay, well, where do I want to go? 
once you have an idea of where you are, the next step is where do you, I want to go? What is my dream life? What does that look like? And the reason I choose uh, the idea of movies is because I know for me, I've always had a wild imagination. When I was young, I envisioned myself in Star Wars as either Han Solo or Darth Vader because um, that was just who I resonated with. But we all have this desire for something more and something greater than ourselves. So when you figure out where you are and you figure out what's kind of my story, what's what, what do I want my story to be? In other words, what is the hero or heroine's journey that I want to go on? And movies are an easy, re easy reference because you can look at the Marvel movies, you can look at Lord of the Rings, you can look at The Matrix. There's all of these different stories where a hero goes on a journey and it's a hard journey sometimes. It's very hard to do that journey. But that's where the satisfaction becomes, because it's not about ultimately what we get in life, but it's about who we become. And from there, you start to look at, this is where my story has been. This is the story that I want to create. This is, in other words, who I want to be. This is the version of myself that I see myself being at the end of this story. And then it's, well, who's been writing the script? And what I mean by that is words matter. How we talk to each other matters what we listen to matters. And so you have to start really getting focused on what you want to take away from your life and how you're contributing to life. So to continue on with this idea of the movie, then you need to start asking yourself, well, who's my supporting cast? In other words, who are the people that I'm surrounding myself with? Are they people that are encouraging me to grow? Or are they people that are holding me back? And I have friends that like to do the same thing weekend after weekend after weekend. And for them, that's what their life is about. I have other friends who we meet on a regular basis and we talk about personal development and personal growth and our goals and our dreams. And we hold each other accountable to accomplish those dreams and get those goals realized. The next thing is you have to look at your soundtrack. And it's not just the music you listen to, but it's who you listen to. Are you listening to the news all the time? Are you just simply on Facebook or social media, Instagram, and just constantly scrolling on that? Or are you listening to people who've had tremendous success and listening to what they have to say that so you can better your life? And pointing up to here, so we're good. Now we check ourselves, we do all what you said, but still, I don't think it's it's enough, right? I don't think it's enough. Maybe there it, it starts, let's say, something, right? Well, so, yeah, I was going to say, in this day and age, we live, you know, it's amazing. I, I look back on just how far we've come. Obviously, I've been around for a little while. And I remember, for example, if I wanted to know between about the war between Sparta and Athens growing up, Maybe I could ask my dad and he might, because he was in the military, he might have a little bit of knowledge about it. If he didn't, then I hoped that I would have encyclopedias. And for people who don't know what encyclopedias are, it was a collection of books that had all this information in it. It was basically like an early, early, early version of the internet without connecting to other people. But if we didn't have the, if the encyclopedias didn't have the information, then you had to go to the library. And if you didn't have a vehicle or the library wasn't within walking distance or riding a bike, it could take you weeks to get the information that I just asked about what's the, what was the battle between Sparta and Athens about 2,500 years ago. Today, though, that, that information is available instantly. And as a result, we have created this culture where we want instant gratification. We've heard that all the time. And so people think, well... I see this person having success. Why can't I have success that quickly too? And the reality is success is a discipline. Success is doing the same things over and over that create the repetition and skill of success so that you can realize that. And it's not, again, it's not about this short-term wins. Certainly we want to build a plan that we are accomplishing things and feel good about ourselves on a regular basis, but it's the beginning of a journey and the journey only gets more clear, the more clear you get on who you want to become and what you're trying to pursue. So that, that, that is uh, also, let's say, when you start, uh, let's say you start uh, walking in the new direction, let's say, yep. changing your life. So also you change, uh, of course, you can, you change also some of your friends, as you said, right? Yep. 
and then you start to have new habits as well with the discipline as you said and does the person itself feel the the difference or is it uh, mostly from other people they see that what do you think well ultimately when you start to it's it's a it's a great question and part of it is i will talk to the idea that you're going to become a different person in other words if you are someone let's say that you today you drink all the time you don't eat well you work out once or twice a week maybe and you want to be a millionaire or you want to own a villa in Mykonos or you want to have a yacht that you can sail on the Mediterranean. The person that you need to become in order to have those things probably isn't someone who drinks all the time, who doesn't eat well. So you're going to have to change who you become. And so part of that is who you surround yourself with and surrounding yourself with people who've had success, who are going to challenge you and hold you accountable to grow. And when that happens, you will see a change because you'll eventually get to a point where you realize, oh my gosh, now that I've stopped drinking or now that I'm eating much better, my thoughts are clearer. I have more energy. I have more focus. I have more purpose on what I'm trying to accomplish. I have greater clarity about who I am and where I'm going. And the great thing that I like about this idea of living like you're in a movie is who we are and what we do, there's a relationship between those two things. In other words, I would say that who we are is more important than what we do, but what we do is constantly shaping who we are. When you say, when you put what we do first, it's a recipe for frustration because you're doing stuff, trying to get to this version of yourself, but you kind of have to create the version in your head first. You have to imagine what does success look like? What does the person who owns a million dollar yacht that sails around the Mediterranean look like? What do they act like? How do they think? Who do they engage with? Who do they speak with? And when you start to create this version of yourself, what ends up happening is you start to get real clear on, well, these are the things that I need to do in order to become this version of myself. And that means these are the things that I need to stop doing to stay where I, otherwise I'll stay where I am. Does that make sense? Yeah. Uh, in one sense, we have to lead ourselves, right? Yes. Okay. <laughs> so now I have a question on this. Okay. So, is it easier to lead yourself or to lead others? Oh, well, you, I, I would contend, I would argue that you can't lead others until you effectively lead yourself. You can manipulate sometimes and coerce or intimidate other people, but to order to really authentically lead and influence people to become greater versions of themselves or to accomplish something fantastic, you have to have the discipline to lead yourself first. And that's, and ultimately, I mean, that's the name of the game, right? When you really think about it, we all want, we all want the rewards of a, a great life, but the idea that we are dependent on someone else to fulfill that for us doesn't make sense to me because I want to define my life on my terms and I want to have the impact that I want to have. And that calls on me to turn on to and draw from my internal resources in order that I can make the greatest contribution possible. And so it's really the key is being able to lead yourself in order to effectively lead and influence others. What do you think will be the difference in the world if people will take it seriously about taking charge of their lives and also leading their lives? What do you, do you think will be the, the, the change? I Well, the first thing is people would stop blaming other people for what happens. A lot of times in our society today, I mean, I, certainly I look in the United States, our politics have become so divisive here in the U.S. and one side is always blaming the other side. And you see that play out in the constituency where people say this party is ruining the country or that party is ruining the country. The reality is if you step up and take ownership for your own life, take responsibility for your actions and how you choose to react to the circumstances around you, you can absolutely lead an extraordinary life. So uh, to answer your question, if we all did that, if we all said, I'm not going to blame anyone else for my life. I'm going to take ownership and responsibility for my own life. I think we would transform the planet in a few years. Uh, what are the most uh, difficult 
this that you find in your in your in your work uh, by helping other people to change their lives what, what is the most difficult thing that people uh, don't change <laughs> well know? i love i love the name of your podcast because a lot of times people get stuck in their story mm. and when when their story is one that says i can't do this because this happened or this happened to me or this person left me or this person hurt me or this person doesn't respect me they get stuck in the story and they tell themselves the story so much that it becomes their life and they believe they're stuck in their story and ultimately that is that's kind of the beautiful part of being a life coach is it's not that you give someone the answers it's that you ask them the question that helps them free themselves and but i would say from my experience and exposure and certain working around the people I've worked with, people get stuck in their story and they think there's no way out of their story until they realize that there is a greater opportunity and a greater possibility. And sometimes it's behind uh, their back. Eh? I mean, it's in the back. <laughs> sometimes, <laughs> yes. Well, and then honestly, that's the, the whole, the beauty of coaching is just being able to get someone to step a little bit to the right or a little bit to the left of where they're normally looking at something so they can see it differently. And they're like, oh my gosh, I, I do have an option here. Oh, that's fantastic. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. But when the stress, it just, the stress is over you, it's like, oh man, <laughs> there's no solution for me. <laughs> well, when people get, <laughs> yeah, when people get stressed out, they go into survival mode, right? And then it's all about survival and it's that flight or fight instinct. And, when that happens, you're not thinking clearly because you're thinking about how do I survive this? And it could be, how do I not get fired? Or how do I prevent our relationship from ending? Or, you know, any number of things. But when you get in that survival mode, then the intelligent part of our brain shuts off and it's just, how do I survive this and get through it? Okay. Uh, we try to keep uh, our interviews a bit short. So what do you, what do you want to end? To this interview today. Yeah, no, I really appreciate the time. I'm grateful to talk to your audience. The one thing, the, the best piece of advice or best thing I've heard uh, comes from Tony Robbins. Uh, and uh, I heard this the first time about six years ago, but I heard him say, life doesn't happen to you, life happens for you. And when you hear that and when you really digest and process what that means, that to me is the pathway towards an extraordinary life. And that's something that we can all have. It doesn't matter how old you are. It doesn't matter how much money you have. All it takes is you to realize that you have everything you need within you now to realize and live an extraordinary life. Thank you very much, David. Thank you. Thank you. Very thank much. you. Yeah. It's been a pleasure. <laughs> and, uh, please, guys, subscribe and share the video for people who want to take charge of their lives. So, and also we will give you more information about David, where you can find David and you can contact him. And if you have any questions, just write in our comment and David or David will, is going to answer you any, any question you have. But till Absolutely. next time, guys, thank you very much. Bye.